All right, guys, we are back again with another episode of Mike P's Teas and Such. Today is Sunday, also Father's Day. Happy Father's Day to any fathers watching. Um, we're going to feed all the animals today. So, obviously, we have several new additions to the collection. Uh, Hapalopus, Columbia species, large, came in. Uh, they are a lot smaller than I had anticipated them to be, so... I did not do a rehouse video on them, uh, but I did replace the substrate in their enclosure just because I that's I like to do that. Um, and I guess we'll go ahead and we will get started on feeding everything. So I hope you guys enjoy this. Here is the my mature female Afonocoma Samani. And she's gonna get a big male dube. Let's see. I'm gonna push this little guy her way. Oh, and there it is. You don't always get the awesome action shot you want, but. It's always good to watch them and know that they're eating nonetheless. Maybe we'll get a happy dance, maybe. Let's see, a couple more seconds. Nope. So we are going to move on to the next one. Next up is the Avicularia Avicularia. This is also female. I assume it is mature. It is as big as it's gonna get. So let me grab my trusted tongs here. And the roach, if I can grab it. And we will try and see if we can't get a nice top shot. I'm aiming for the web right next to her. And that did not work. Ah, oh, that sucks. Maybe that roach will come back up here. Um, nope. So, let me see if I can do something real quick. So let's see about giving her a male lat. Uh, she'll eat that other one, so I'm not really super worried about it. Okay, well, that kind of sucks, because now I have a male and female in there, and I'm hoping she eats that female first. So, no luck on this girl. She usually always eats, but I've been trying not to tong feed her because she is pretty aggressive, and I don't want her hitting her fangs on those tongs. So we'll move on to the next one for now and I'll keep an eye on those roaches. Here we have Grandma Stola Poker Peas or Choco Golden Knee. And this guy gets a super worm with its head cut so it can't bite. So let's see who's hungry. Come on, little guy. Let's see. Maybe I will have to tease it. It's always fun how they'll eat every time and then as soon as I try to do a little video they are not hungry anymore Ooh, there he is it getting big too I think nah, no nah, shouldn't be pre molt yet but let's drop this guy in front of him see what he does yeah
this one including uh, plus the next two I've owned since tiny slings uh, I think this one was 0.75 when I got it but they pack on size so quickly and they eat so much and that is one thing I love about them you don't they're easier to learn about molts um, about pre molts because it's super obvious a little happy dance super obvious when they're about to go in molts because they eat like machines and then they stop so and he's gonna go back down in. Um, so that really helped me first starting out because I mean if you're new obviously it's one of those things you worry about how do I know if it's pre-molt how do I know if it's sick or or whatever you know people have a lot of questions and uh, sometimes you just have to learn it because if anybody else is part of their little Facebook groups I don't know about everybody else's but sometimes my guys aren't too helpful A lot of them like to answer a question with a question. All right, so next up is Green Bottle Blue or Chromatopalma cyanopubescens. And that needs a new water dish. So I'm gonna get that water dish out real quick. This guy is webbing up like a beast. Oh, he does not want me to mess with his crap. And I don't want to mess with it either, but okay. So we will give him a new water dish, which I have right here. And I do. mess in my own place okay so obviously you just replace it and I'm guessing the GBB is hungry because he keeps coming out even though I'm essentially wrecking his home either angry or hungry let's find out once again we'll go this side it's a uh, super room with the head cut let's see if we can't bring him out a bit let's see maybe fishing is today gonna be a fishing day hmm oh he ran past it and then ran back to it and it dropped through that sucks now I gotta get that okay so I got it There we go, we got some wiggle. They really do not want to eat on camera for me, do they? Hmm. Well, I guess we are just beat on that one. At least it did come out. Probably mad because I wrecked his web. Alright, this is the Acanthoscura Gina Colada. Um, this one was my first and remains to this day my best eater, so hopefully we'll be able to get a nice one. Usually something just has to hit the dirt. Move a little bit. Oh, come on. They're just not moving enough when I cut that head off. He 
could eat too anyway, so I'll go ahead and Come on. It is fishing day. It's always nicer if they just come out on their own accord, but sometimes you gotta give them a reason. Wow. I'm wondering if the GBB is in pre-molt also. Its abdomen's pretty fat for not eating for the last week. And it actually really wouldn't be much of a surprise if this one was in pre-molt as well. So, I will take the dead one, or the one with the head cut off, and leave it in there for him. If he wants to eat it, he'll eat it. And I'll refill his water. And a little bit down the corner. I like to keep about a quarter of the substrate a little bit more moist than the rest. I guess you can't really see that like that. But we will move on to the slings, hopefully they will give us a better show. So first up on slings is the TAD Tiger. Oh, I don't know if you guys saw that, but I didn't from my angle. I do see it down there. Oh, here he comes. Say hi. He does not have the roach in his mouth, though, so that is... It does look like he bit it down there, though, and it's like stuck it to the web. It is not moving. But, yeah, that's a nice little view of him. He is usually out at night. Um, and there he goes back down the hole to eat his food and back out to say hi again. He is usually out at night. I see him every time I make my rounds right before I go to bed. Okay, so right here we have the Pyramenia. I'm really hoping to be able to get you a good shot of this guy. Um, guy, gal. So, let's see. I'm really hoping for a molt here soon so I can oh, there go my tongs so that I can uh, put this in a more visual appealing enclosure. Oh, and there it is. I hate glare, but this one is usually out. Surprisingly, more than I've heard that they usually are, and it'll sit right on that cork bark, right on the front, and just sit there. Um, it is not scared of my light either when I shine it, so that is kind of cool, I guess. Up next is, I believe, Terranoculus Marinus, Marinus uh, OBT. Also known as Orange Starburst Baboon and Orange Bitey Thing, among some. They're known for their threat postures and aggressiveness and flightiness, but I've actually heard that as long as you don't mess with their web, they don't really give a damn. So, let's see if this one is hungry. Alright. I've noticed this guy can be kind of shy, so I am going to just try to tong feet a bit. Oh, never mind. He grabbed it as soon as it hit, so I don't know how much you saw, but I barely saw it. But it's good to know that he's eating. Alright, and next up we have 
let's see what uh C Libidum Cobalt Blue I do not expect to see this one. I never do, except at night. And then I only see his feet. But we will try to time feed him as well. I usually just have to, like I said, kill it and put it on his front door. I don't see his little feet anywhere either. Okay. So I'm going to pre kill just like last time, and then just right somewhere. There we go. He'll come out and eat it here soon up next we have Hapalopus Columbia species large these are the new teas that I just got they are super tiny as I've said so I do not know if we are gonna be able to get a little video of them I will try I also have to feed them flightless fruit flies. So, we will do that. And this little guy, I will try to point you out with a brush, is right in that tiny little hole right there at the tip of the brush. So I will try to aim a fruit fly in that direction. And maybe we will get something out of it. Um, but I guess there is only one way to find out. So, flightless fruit fly, take one. Mm. We will try to move that little guy in the direction we want him to go. I would have put these guys in smaller vials, but I did not have them. So hopefully, almost, keep going that direction, little guy. Oh, he's coming. Why is this fruit fly? Does it know? Oh, I don't want to go over there. There's something there. Wow, this thing is extremely difficult. There we go. <laughs> Didn't mean to fling the piece of uh the piece of moss at him, but uh it worked. All right, so let's move on to the next one. Like I said, it is always good to know that they are eating. This is the first feed for them in my care, so I'm always happy to see it. Um, I am sorry. I guess I didn't mention the video camera. So I got one. It came in the mail. Went to set it up. Crap camera. So, returned it, and I will be looking into another camera, but for now, I just have a 64 gig SD card for the phone, so I will be using that for all my uploads, but at the same time, that is also the camera I will be using. So, here is... H species Columbia large number two and this one is actually out you can already see that little fella let's hit that light back on oh no the little 
fruit flies everywhere. All right, we got them back in there. Right behind you, good job. That is awesome. Both eating healthy, both super small. I've never had to feed flightless fruit flies to any animal before, so this was a new experience on that end. Um, let's see, what do we have next? Um, scorpions. So we will move on to them, and we also have the wolf spider, the female that ate her egg sac, but that is okay. Like I've said, I'm not ready for a thousand babies. Okay, up first is Androctinus australis, number one. I have four of these. I did try to mention in the last video on Sunday that um, I have been keeping track of their feeding uh, so that I know how they are doing. Like I've said several times and I'll probably continue to say, I have trouble with the first uh, week or two feeding scorpions for whatever reason, but they get on a habit and they do pretty well. So last week, like I said in my Rocky start video, hopefully we can recreate the attacks we got last week because every one of them ate. Maybe let it crawl on your face. That is not the best start. Um, numbers one and four have been my pickiest eaters. Um, so two and three are the main two that I am hoping for, but one and four definitely took down prey last weekend. So let's see if this guy will take it down. If he doesn't, then we will move on to the next one. And usually, if they don't take it down within 20 minutes, I'll get back in there, I'll pre-kill it, and then just lay it in there. And if it's there within 24 hours, or in 24 hours, then I will uh, just go ahead and take it out. You're playing a game, and he is not playing with it. So, we will move on to the next one number two and go from there it's always fun when you have picky ones so here is number two like I've said two and three tend to be the good eaters flip over already. It's causing enough commotion. Get my hand. Good God. Come on. There you go. Walk right towards it. Oh yeah. That's a nice little sting. I do love these guys. Like I've said, I just think it's amazing to watch these guys do what they do. And these guys are just all super tiny. So, that was a good takedown. We will let him it enjoy its meal. That is number two, eaten again. So I will mark that down on my little scorekeeper. So that is five that he has eaten. Number one has eaten two. Number three has eaten four, and four has eaten two. So let's move on to three. And this guy, I will tong feed just because I have them in a little bit larger of an enclosure. Well I guess we can try to regular feed at first. 
This is number three, Androctinus australis. Man, I can't wait till these guys get bigger. So let me try to put it right next to them. Yeah, he might not go for that. Get back over there. Come on. It's gone the wrong way. So yes, we are going to tong feed. Oh, okay. Well, we will leave this to here then. And I will watch it and make sure it eats. This is the first time it has not eaten. And I'm, they're so small, I can't tell if it's possible pre-molt. I can't tell how fat they are. I can't see if the back plates are spread like the... Uh, second in star parabuthus transvelicus that I just got that is really obvious pre -molt. so this is number four and he's already going crazy okay so let's see if we can get a second one to go Keep going, little guy. Mm, it's a lot of patience. A lot of patience. Everywhere from feeding them to waiting for them to grow is all about patience. can't really make these guys do what you want them to do. Oh, what was that? I don't know if it was defensive. I really don't want it to go to the back of them. They always seem to be more spooked when they go to the back. I don't know if it's just because these guys are small. And I think that's pure defensive. I don't think he's interested in it right now. Yeah. He definitely would have taken that thing if he was interested in it. So. Yeah. We will. Like I said, I'll leave it in there for about 20 minutes. And uh, if not pre-kill, not gone after 24 hours. Then I will take it out and we will try feeding next week. So here we have the Parabuthus transvelicus. And I am not going to try to feed this one a lat roach pinhead. I am actually going to try a flightless fruit fly again because it is, <laughs> you can tell. It is in pre-molt, so I'm going to, like I said, I'm just going to try to feed it. If it does not eat, then uh, that is okay, but if it does, that is that little bit of moisture that it can have to go towards its molting. Nope, it wants nothing to do with that deal. Leave it a couple more seconds. <laughs> I also do not know if this is too small for this guy. I wouldn't imagine that it would be. But 
he definitely does not want it there. So um, we are going to go ahead and leave him alone. And I'm going to get that out of there. Somehow. I will have to do that off camera later. I think it'll take a little too long. So we will put him and I will check him again with the others. Man, nothing wants to eat today. I do not get it at all. I really don't. Here we have third in star. Parabuthus transvelicus. And this one is obviously larger. Look at that nice fat tail. I love that. I think that's cooler than hell. All right, so we are just going to drop a pinhead lat in there and see where that goes. I did not mean to drop two. Oh, that is nice. And he was hungry. I am going to get that other pinhead out, though. Maybe he'll go for that one. Oh, man. Okay. So I guess that makes up for uh, for some of the others. Uh, obviously, I'm not going to take that away from him now. I guess I can just kind of hope that he's going to eat, like, next week. Um, so there is that one. I do love how the segments on the back look. How they have that, like that center wave that all the plates follow, right to that big fat tail. So we will move on to the next one. Oh, I don't know if you guys noticed. I guess I forgot to mention. Uh, I have obviously replaced that black sand with uh, play sand. It was driving me insane. I do not like fake color sand. If it's, I've heard that Hawaii has a beach that's natural black sand, and if it was something like that, that'd be different, but I just really don't trust, like, pet store sand. I don't really care for pet stores in general anyway. I think I've probably said that. So this is, let me try to pronounce it, uh, L. Quinquestriatus. <laughs> I've been working on the the Quinquestriatus, but <laughs> I haven't been working on that first name there. Um, Death Stalker is the common name. 